Pace, Nigel Dodds, the DUP, their MPs at Westminster. So, um, following the events of yesterday, there's been a lot of speculation why no agreement was secured in Brussels. Uh, and for our part, um, as we made clear in the House just a, a few short minutes ago, the Democratic Unionist Party has repeatedly and consistently made clear that Northern Ireland must leave the European Union on the same terms as the rest of the United Kingdom. And we welcome the very strong support of many colleagues across Parliament for this position, as evidenced today in the House where there was very, very strong support from Labour, Conservatives, about the integrity of the United Kingdom and the need to maintain the United Kingdom uh, going forward after Brexit. So we will not accept any principles or language in phase one which lays the foundations for separating Northern Ireland politically or economically from the rest of the United Kingdom. Now the Prime Minister and her government have made clear that the economic and constitutional integrity of the UK will not be compromised in any way and David Davis uh, repeated that today in his statement and they wouldn't support any proposals that breach that central tenant. And for us, and indeed many in Parliament, the integrity of the United Kingdom comes first. So despite several briefings uh, uh, over the course of the last few weeks, we only received written text late yesterday morning. We understand this was due in part to delays caused by the Irish government and the EU negotiating team. Upon immediate receipt of that text, we indicated to senior government representatives that it was clearly unacceptable in its current form. Now, Her Majesty's Government understands the DUP position and we trust in the aftermath of yesterday's. O others now understand it very clearly as well. The Prime Minister has said that there will be no border in the Irish Sea. She has made it clear that the UK is leaving the European Union as a whole and that the territorial and economic integrity of the United Kingdom will be protected. So we want to see a sensible Brexit and we will continue to work through the detail of all these issues with the Government today and in the coming days. These are issues are of such vital importance to our nation as a whole that we must work for as long as it's necessary to ensure that they're got right. So the DUP does stand strong for the Union and we also issue a warning today to the Dublin government that by continuing its aggressive stance they are in danger of delivering for themselves the very outcomes that they say they want to avoid. So now more than ever it's clear that we took the correct view in encouraging people throughout the United Kingdom to vote to leave the European Union. So we'll take a few questions. Timothy. Laura. Okay. Well, we're not in the business of issuing any instructions to anybody. We don't want to see the talks fail and we don't want to see an outcome where there's no deal. We want to see a sensible Brexit and we will work through on the basis of the clear red lines that we have set down, which are, as we understand it, the red lines of the government as well. So a sensible Brexit in which the UK leaves as one nation uh, with a sensible relationship with the rest of the EU, with a soft border in the uh, island of Ireland, which can be done on the basis of set out in the government's paper back in August. But we have to move forward in a progressive way and we will work constructively to achieve that end. Well, it's not a question of us budging. This is a negotiation between the United Kingdom government and the European Commission. The European Commission, unfortunately, I think, and maybe to the regret of some of the other member states, ceded a veto to the Irish Republic. Uh, and that's a matter that they will maybe want to reconsider. We, for our part, are very confident about where we stand and we're very confident that the British government understands that when you translate red lines into text, the text has got to reflect what is the red lines. Robert Hesson. Robert. Stop Brexit! <laughs> it's not a done deal! Right, Robert. Great. Um, if the government were to persist with an offer to the EU that you saw as bringing the risk of re or introducing a border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK, would you be prepared to tear up your pact that keeps the Conservative Party in power? I don't think the government will consider that. I don't think they will go down the route of trying to impose something that would, in our view, uh, disrupt politically or economically 
Northern Ireland from the rest of the United Kingdom. So I don't think that scenario will arise. But do you have any sense that they have got an offer that you regard as sensible? Well, we continue to work with the government. Uh, we have uh, very good discussions with them. As I say, text is important. Words are important. They really do matter. So when we finally see text, that's when we make the final decision. And clearly the text that we were shown very late yesterday morning did not translate what we had been told in general conversations into reality because there was far too much ambiguity uh, and didn't actually kneel down the issues that need to be kneeled down. Gary, Gibbons, Gary yes. Thank you. Um, David Davis said in the House, regulatory alignment is not a word to be phrased to be a price result. It doesn't mean harmonisation. Do you agree? Well, Northern Ireland already has a single uh, energy market with the Irish Republic, so there are areas where we can cooperate with the Irish Republic and indeed where it may make sense to have some kind of regulatory alignment in certain specific areas, but not in relation to the following the rules of the single market or the customs union for Northern Ireland as a generality. Uh, the fact of the matter is that this whole issue of no divergence and regulatory alignment, in our view, has been brought in by the Irish Republic. The fact is that there were sensible and are sensible ways of dealing with the Irish border which don't involve that through technology and trusted trader status and exemptions. The EU has said no to that. It is the EU that is causing the problems in terms of a hard border in, uh, in, in Ireland, not the DUP, not the British government. There are sensible ways around that, and those should continue to be explored. No, knowing what you know, would you be astonished if there was a deal before the end of this week? Would I be astonished? Uh, I've learned not to be astonished at anything in politics anymore. <laughs> Andy Bell, Five News. Um, what do you say to those people who say that now the DUP has a veto on the UK's policy when it comes to the European Union, and that can't be right? No, no, the DUP doesn't have any veto. Um, the Irish Republic does have a veto. They're uncomfortable with that veto because they keep trying to say, no, it's not our veto, it's the EU, but it's very clear... Uh, that the EU uh, have given a veto to the Irish Republic and the Irish Republic are flexing their muscles and using their current position to try to gain wins for them. I don't uh, argue with their desire to advance their interests, but they're doing so in a reckless and dangerous way, which is putting at risk years of good Anglo-Irish relations and good cooperation within Northern Ireland. Uh, and there is a noticeable change in tone and aggression from the Irish Republic since Leo Varadkar and Simon Coveney took power compared to the previous administration. So they are the ones that are in danger of bringing about problems as a result of the use of a veto, not us. Tom Rayner, Sky News. You said that there was some ambiguity in the text that you received yesterday morning. Did anything that David <coughs> Davis just said in the House of Commons clear that up? Did the government change its position at all in what he said? Well, the government have always been clear about their red lines, and, and we talk to them, and we have been very clear to them, and them clear to us. But as I make, have said previously, what matters is the text. What matters are the words that are used in text and in international treaties and agreements. And it's vitally important that text translates accurately what are the general principles of political agreement. And when we negotiated the, Bell, the St Andrews Agreement and other agreements, that has always been the key test. We have sought to uh, engage the government on that text. The government showed us that text late yesterday morning. Okay, last question. You say you want to hold the United Kingdom together. Are you not worried that you're actually jeopardising the future of the United Kingdom by delaying our Brexit? No, no, I think that what you heard in the House of Commons today, what you've heard from Ruth Davidson, what you've heard from uh, right across the House of Commons, and indeed the strong support we have been getting as we've been here since Monday uh, among backbenchers of every hue, is that one thing that will not be allowed to happen is that the United Kingdom is broken up. And uh, it's really gratifying this today to hear Keir Starmer reiterate that very strongly, <laughs> Labour backbenchers making that very clear, uh, and I think Ruth Davidson's uh, intervention and her comments uh, have been uh, very, very welcomed by people in Northern Ireland, and Arlene Foster and, and Ruth uh, spoke uh, earlier today as well. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.